Today we'll be starting a grid drawing. You'll need a paper like this. Most of the options that you can choose to draw are pictures that are horizontal, but there's one that is vertical. So make sure you turn your paper the correct way to get started. With whichever picture you've chosen, there are labels for each grid square. So for example, this is grid square A1, this is grid square A2, A3, A4, B1, etc. I recommend you start out by labeling those grid squares on your own paper so it's easier to keep track of what part of the drawing that you are on. So I'm labeling my rows and my columns and then it also doesn't hurt to label each square one at a time because sometimes we're focused on, and in fact we will be focused on only one square and this can help us from keeping so that we aren't confused on which part of the drawing we're working on. I want to clear up a misconception before we get started. One of the things that a lot of students want to do on impulse is to trace. Today, the size of the picture and the size of these are intentionally different so that you have to actually practice the skill that we are doing, which is enlarging an image. If you're just trying to trace, we're not going to be able to practice the grid drawing skill. The major advantage with grid drawing is it takes a detailed picture and breaks it up into smaller, more manageable chunks and adds lines that we can use as edges to help us estimate where different parts of the drawing are. For example, in this first grid square up here, I can tell the top of this vase is in the lower left hand corner and I can look in my grid and I could even use fractions to help me estimate where different parts of this picture in this one square are. So if I make a little tally mark about halfway across vertically and horizontally on this grid square, there's nothing in this upper quarter. In this upper quarter we have the top of this face, lower one we've got the bottom, and this one, the top of this face doesn't even start till about halfway down again, or about a quarter of the way uh, in the whole square. So using those estimations, I can start to sketch exactly what I see as accurately as I can. So I could even make little halfway tally marks on this one that's a little bit bigger and start to draw accurately and with the same proportions. Accuracy and proportion is something we're trying to achieve with our grid drawing and when we're working we want to think about the size and scale of what we see. So what we see in our picture we should recreate as accurately and with the full amount of detail that we can. This is a skill that will take practice and it's okay if you don't get it perfectly the first time. That's why there's a few different images to choose from with different levels of difficulty. I think that this picture that only has one consistent value and no uh, shading to do would be the easiest but if you choose it you'll also have to do another one as well. To be as accurate and intentional as you can, I recommend trying to match the values or the shades of gray as you go, rather than saving it until the end. So here on the vase, I see this shiny reflecting highlight. So I'm going to start to draw that on my image as well, while I'm still working on the first square here. The shine goes all the way to the bottom, so I want to notice those details and recreate them as I go. Then the rest of the vase is a lighter gray, so I can start using my pencil to apply a lighter gray shading. I'm pressing really lightly to get that light gray, and then when I see darker shadows, I can layer more layers of graphite over each other to make that part of the shadow on the vase. This is something that does take time and practice, and that's okay. It's a good challenge for us to think about something new. This might be something you've never tried before, so it's okay that we take our time and try our best. Whenever you're finished with one square, then you'll move on to the next one. It could be vertical or horizontal that you do next. I think I'm going to look at A2. So in square A2, we can see the side of this face, the top of this one, and some of the leaves from this plant. So I would start to look and see where in this square each of these things are. Again, if this is the halfway line, this one is well below the halfway line and it's about in the middle. So, well below the halfway line 
and about in the middle, I would start to sketch the top of this vase. If the shape or the size looks wrong, then I can change it. I think in this case it should be a little lower and the shape should be a little bit more subtle. So it's a process of working carefully and making changes if needed. For me, I always want to remember to draw lightly with my pencil. I'm never pushing very hard because once you push really, really hard, it can be almost impossible to ever erase the pencil all the way. Don't forget to add your name as you work on your grid drawings.